In this video, I am going to talk about differences between night terrors and nightmares. Night terrors are episodes of a partial waking from sleep with behaviors such as screaming, kicking, panic, crashing, mumbling, or sleepwalking. Typically happen a couple of hours after going to sleep during non-REM sleep. The episode may last up to 30 to 45 minutes. The child's eyes are wide open, but the child is still asleep and doesn't know whether somebody is around. The child is frightened, but you cannot talk to the child. You cannot awaken or comfort the child. Each episode of night terror will eventually end in deep sleep. And the child often does not remember the episode in the next morning. On the other hand, nightmares are actually scary or bad dreams that awaken the child and are associated with severe anxiety and symptoms of increased sympathetic outflow, such as rapid heartbeat, sweating, rapid respiratory rate. And nightmares occur usually later at night or early in the morning during REM sleep. The child is a lot more aware of what's going on because the child is awake and he or she might consciously seek out one of the parents to comfort his or her fears. And the child is afraid to go back to sleep and uh, the child is able to recall these scary dreams on waking up. Some more differences. Night terrors are more common in kids between the ages of 4 to 12 and are harmless. About 6.5% of kids and only 2.2% of adults have night terrors. Exact cause is not known, but maybe because of a positive family history of sleepwalking or night terrors, or maybe due to recent change in life, or maybe because of tiredness. On the other hand, nightmares, they can affect people of any age. Again, there is no known cause, but sometimes happen when the child has seen or heard things that upset him or her and it is a major symptom of post-traumatic disorder. The sufferer may have experienced previous trauma in the past. History taking is same for in both stations for night terrors and nightmare. You have to elaborate the event, how often it happens, what does the child exactly do during the episode, moving limbs or screaming, thrashing around, jumping out of the bed, sleepwalking. Also, it's better to ask about any abnormal thing you notice during the episode such as rolling up of eyes, bed wetting, passing of wee or poo, uh, breathlessness episodes or if whether the child goes blue during these episodes just to exclude any underlying health condition and uh, ask does the child remember this happening the next morning and what do you do during the episode. Key points uh, in history are that any recent uh, health issue, any recent dietary change, any significant recent life change or any events, changing of home or starting of school or changing of school or loss of a family member or loss of a pet or birth of a younger sibling. All these things can disturb the child and the child may have these night terror episodes. If there is a, such a change, then ask whether the child was well before this change. Inquire about personal habits of the child, especially before going to sleep. Ask about watching TV, listening to scary stories, playing with iPad or computer before going to bed. Also ask about sleep hygiene. What time does the child go to sleep? How is the sleeping space? Whether the room and bedding comfortable, any noisy surroundings, bed wetting issues, and important to ask about family history of night terrors or sleepwalking. In past medical history, ask about asthma, congenital heart disease, ADHD, sleep apnea, adenites, snoring, tonsillitis, epilepsy. Ask about any medications the child is taking and any allergies. It is better to ask about home circumstances just to exclude any child abuse. So you can ask who else lives at home, who takes care of the child, how is the financial situation at home, is your husband, uh, is the child's biological father, and does anybody else take care of the child. Also ask about uh, the birth history, any problem during or after birth of the child, about immunization, red book, and uh, child child's development. All these things are important to find out the exact cause. Coming to the management of night terrors, it is different from the management of nightmares. It is very important to set a good bedtime routine and adopt sleep hygiene measures. Be sure your child goes to bed early and at regular time to have enough sleep. Make sure bedding is comfortable, room is comfortable and take any other appropriate comfort measures. It's better to 
keep the night light on to avoid being in the dark and uh, ask the child to empty bladder before going to bed. Second important thing is breaking the cycle if night errors are happening regularly. Notice a time frame when the episodes happen and possibly wake the child 15 minutes before the expected time and do it for at least seven days to stop the episodes and break the cycle. This will not disturb the sleep quality. Talking to your child about any possible stresses can be helpful. However, do not discuss the details of the episode as it may in turn cause more anxiety. What to do during a night terror episode? Advise the mother to stay calm while the child is having an episode. Don't try to wake the child during the episode and don't intervene as they may not recognize you and become more anxious or even aggressive. Don't shake or shout at the child. It can make them more upset. You can hold the child if it seems to help him or her feel better. Make sure your child is safe. Protect the child against any possible injury because during a night terror, a child can fall down a stairway and run into a wall or break a window. Wait until the child calms down, then try to gently direct your child back to bed and try to help your child return to normal sleep by making soothing comments. Safety netting, please come back if you notice any of the following. The child has drooling or jerking or stiffening during the episode. Terrors are interrupting sleep on a regular basis or episodes last longer than 30 minutes. Or if the child does something dangerous during the episode or you notice any other symptoms with night terrors. Or if your child is experiencing daytime fears or is, if there are family stresses which are contributing to night terrors or if you have any concerns or questions about your child's night terrors. Coming to the management of nightmares, because the child is awake, you need to comfort, reassure, and cuddle your child. Talk about the bad dreams with your child during the daytime. Protect your child from seeing or hearing frightening movies or TV shows and reading scary books. It's better to leave the bedroom door open, never close the door on a fearful child. It's it, it is quite helpful to provide a security blanket or a favorite toy as a nighttime protector against scaries just to comfort your child. Let your child go back to sleep in his or her own bed and don't spend a lot of time searching for the monster, an imaginary monster. It will reinforce your child's fears. During the bedtime routine, before your child goes to sleep, talk about happy or fun things. Read some soothing stories to your child about getting over nighttime fears. Safety netting again for nightmares and if nightmares become worse or happen more often, come back. If, it, uh, night, uh, if fear interferes with uh, child's daytime activities or you have other concerns or questions about your child's nightmares, then come back to your GP. Thank you very much and this is the end. Sub subscribe and like and share and see you next time with another useful video. Thank you very much.